us present around here. Good afternoon. I am Kelly Tavares. How are you doing? Can you hear me well? Today we are here at the Terro do Flamengo, where we will be talking about landscape art in Rio de Janeiro, modern art, modern art museum. We will walk around, see a lot of the lush scenery circulating here the Guanabara Bay and feel free to ask your questions around these topics and I will be happy to answer the things I've been researching this year so far and we will start in about eight minutes I'd like to hear from you where are you at if you uh, maybe some of you can't type right must be a cooking or a, don't know traveling riding a car but i hope you can hear me well if you can't message here this tour today that we will have uh we will take about 40 minutes around that just to give you a snippet an idea of this big public park of Rio de Janeiro, which is Aterro do Flamengo. And now the service people here of the maintenance are doing the cleaning, cutting the grasses around, doing keeping the, the park really neat, which is super cool. It wasn't always like that. The current governments are taking care well of the park. And that's great. I'm going to give you an idea of what you see. Here I am at the garden of the, the Stones Garden. There is a, an apita, it's like aloe vera. Some modern art around me. I'm surrounded by those beautiful trees. And as you can see, the weather today is really blue sky perfect temperature and we will have a walk in the surroundings to see some contemporary art and modern art of this architecture here around the uh, mom the museum of modern art is where like many people like to gather under these pilotis these pillars these are inverted pillars. And I will tell you who made these beautiful projects, this beautiful arch architecture project, project and also the gardens of Atijo. Around here, people will come, come and learn all sorts of, of things, such as dance, rollerblading classes, all types of dance classes, people come, learn, or practice together. And we will show a little bit of that. Today, there are just a few people because it's like 2.45 in Rio. Many people are still at work. Hola. Oi, oi. Many people are still at work, but a few young folks are here practicing some dance creating as well. Hey, Reed, thank you for joining. We are warming up to start our tour in Aterro do Flamengo Park. A good tour for you who likes art, modern art, landscape, and green space in urban settings as well. Here we are under the, the block, which was built, this beautiful modern art piece of architecture. 
And these are some inverted pillars which were made. Today I will talk who made them. And we'll, I will talk a little bit of the history of the Aterro do Flamengo Park, sharing some of these beautiful gardens. From here, on this part of the park, is the beginning of the park. And apologies in case I cough, because I, I had a cold. I'm still coughing a little. But look how beautiful the weather is today. From here, I can, I'm can i showing you at the beginning of the park a view of the Museum of Modern Art and the project of gardens and the city center. See, the city center is this area. It's where I live. People are arriving, very excited to dance and do things around. And this place gets packed with people on the weekends, doing all sorts of dance classes, rollerblading, hula hoops, all around. Now I will show you from there, friends are coming, gathering, meeting, to create art with their bodies. They're, here they will do a class of uh, one of those wooden legs that you go really high. And I will share, there is the hustle and bustle of the city with avenues and cars. This express road that takes people all the way to the local national airport. Right here, just three minutes from here. Oh, wow, I just saw... Uh, a fisherman's, a fisher bird, a big one. Hi, Diana and Satyam. Hey, Melissa, welcome. We are warming up here the tour to start in Aterro do Flamengo. The beautiful public park is one of the most public uh, democratic parks in the world, in Brazil. And I will tell you the history of the park today. Look at these beautiful trees. They are the abricó de macaco. Hey, Diana. Hi, Melissa. Thanks for joining, Sue. How are you doing? Can you hear me well? Great, Diana. Thank you so much for being here present. I've been... I haven't been very frequent in the tours, the virtual tours, because now tourism is back and running in Brazil. Hey, thank you. Hi, Alison, thanks for joining. I am Kelly Tavares, tour guide in Rio, and tourism is back and running in the city, so I'm running tours on the streets every day. But I was missing to be here with you, also sharing a little bit of the city virtually as well. So that's why I came now to M. Thank you. And I'd like to remind you that I'm a tour guide, a qualified tour guide here in Rio de Janeiro. So Adrian, welcome back. And I run a tour from my own company, Rio Encantos. So please feel free to join me on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and your social media at Rio Encantos. E-N-C-A-N-T-O-S. And keep in mind that these are beautiful places to come. Don't be afraid. Many people hear bad things about Brazil and Rio, but we actually uh, navigate really well. Uh, we have problems, like in many big cities. And so far, you can have so much fun around here, even in the virtual tours. So please don't hesitate to do your questions. If I don't know the answers, I'm gonna research more, okay? And remember that this is also work for me, even though I do it for fun as well. I love to do it, but it's more encouraging when people support me so I can, uh, you know, pay the expenses and compensate my work and research around the topics we do here. So thank you. Uh, please 
as you go, if you enjoy, uh, let your friends know about it. Leave a testimonial and support us, uh, support us guides. We do a hard work of the things that we love to educate people on the streets and now beyond uh, borders. Hi, Eva. Thanks for coming back. And Adrian, thanks for coming back as well. All right. We are starting here our tour about this garden series, but we will also talk today, since we are at this part of the Aterro do Flamengo, is the most popular park, democratic public park in Brazil, where it is built in the middle of the center of the city, by the shore, close to the Guanabara Bay. And I will show you the surroundings of the Museum of Modern Art, the Guanabara Bay, the sea, and the extensions of the park. Who built the park? Who built the project for the landscape art of this park? If you look here, this is a very nice set of abricó de macacos. And the uh, abricó de macacos, they are abricó of monkeys. They have a beautiful flower that now it's already, it already dropped and blossomed. And it gave, gave place to these fruits that look like bowling balls. Hi, Clementine. Clementine, thanks for joining. And if you look here very close, the details, it pops out when it gets ripe and there is a sticky, uh, a sticky, uh, you know, uh, thing inside. It's the fruit which the little monkeys like to eat. But actually there is a saying that says old monkeys don't put their hands on kumbuka or inside of those bowls because since that fruit is sticky, they can get with their hands stuck inside of one of those fruits. So just the baby monkeys will have access to, to what they consider a treat. All right. What you see here today where I'm stepping in is a project with, that started already in the beginning of the 20th century with different gardens of other styles, with French style, with the Plano Agashi in the region, and then with modern architecture afterwards being planned here in the 50s. So the modern museum of art, Museu de Arte Moderna, which is this beautiful concrete block with glasses, they are kept and sustained by inverted pillars of concrete, arranged here in a way that creates a nice shelter underneath it, which is a place where people love to come and make their own art. While inside of the museum, you'll find collection of modern arts and the modernist movement of Brazil, which was really strong in the, from the 20s to the 40s and 50s. This museum, was built by Afonso Eduardo Heidi, Heidi in 1950s. And it is a masterpiece of modern art in the city in a moment where there weren't many modern constructions such as these using concrete, other than our master of architecture and I don't know if there is someone there who is an architect and maybe would like to share. I will be sharing a little bit of the lines of this beautiful project surrounding it. And a famous architect called Oscar Niemeyer became very famous around the world by bringing the, the technology of concrete armado to Brazil building these big blocks of concrete and different constructions that now there are constructions with his signature all over the world. He lived a long life of 105 years old and passed away a few years ago. 
Uh, Mary Lou, yoo-hoo, from Calgary, and Micah, thanks for joining from Texas. Now, Afonso Francisco Heidi, he was connected with a, a moment of architecture here in Brazil that's had the influences, as you see, of big open spaces, which was also a landmark of Oscar Niemeyer, and influences of architects that were from the Brutalism and also from the Bauhaus in Germany. It's the architecture showing itself on the new technologies of industrial uh, industrialization in the era of the 40s and 50s. This is Afonso Francisco, Afonso Raidi, Afonso Eduardo Raidi. Look how beautiful these lines. These pillars, they will, what they will do? They will be here sustaining this structure, this big rectangle and block and the collection will be inside of these rooms and protected, of course, because of the glass and the light, and they will have beautiful art being represented. Hey, Sue, thanks for joining, coming back. Now look at this modern art here. How interesting this is. The And what's cool about it is also, it's there is one movement of the art and industrial times of the 50s also that would bring together modern architecture, new technology around the, the industrial area of the time, and also functionality. How functioning an artwork could be beyond its art appreciation and aesthetics as well. And these, for example, what does that remind you? And who else do you think use these rounds and turns, waves in this part? Yeah, exactly, Satan. A toilet paper. And it's also used by rollerbladers and skateboarders around here when they pass by. It's interactive art in the place here. Now look at this beautiful giant desert trees. They did very well here in the park and what we will find here in the park is this set of uh, ales of trees what we call the alamedas or groups of trees separated and planted by species and the project that you see all around this 240 hectares of park which is aterro do flamengo were planned by famous landscape architect of Brazil, who did the majority of the modern landscape projects of modern uh, landscapes in Rio de Janeiro. From the 50s, 60s, 70s, and his name was Oscar Niemeyer. So all the lush scenery that you see today, all the gardens were planned, were designed by Oscar Niemeyer. No, not Oscar Niemeyer. Oscar Niemeyer is the architect. was planned by Roberto Burle Marx, who was the famous landscape architect. Now, look, to give you an idea. Hey, Giselle, thanks for joining. They are them here practicing their dance and Vem bom, vem bom. Tá vendo? 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 Tá vend
Also in São Paulo, in the Ibirapuera Park, you also find modern concrete architecture like this with the pilotis. So that was a trend of also with influences of Le Corbusier, uh, French architect, modern architect, famous on that time for the innovations on in architecture. And he was actually here in Brazil uh, to work on a collaborative plan with Brazilian architects to make the Ministry of Culture and Education building, which was a landmark for the modern architecture. Hi, Hans from Bavaria and Debbie. Thank you for joining. Now, everything that we will see will have art in the surroundings, like this beautiful stone garden stones garden as if it was a river and a modern sculpture up there now on my left side you see influences of modern uh, of contemporary sculptures which will create different shapes using iron sculptures and geometric shapes surrounded by art being nature. Hey, Jay Tala, thanks, Karen, for joining. Thank you all. And some street artists who will share their art in the region of Aterro do Flamengo. Now, Aterro do Flamengo could have been exploited as this works from Laís Amaral. Aterro do Flamengo could have been exploited by real property exploitation and be built with a lot of buildings on its surroundings, as it is in Copacabana, Ipanema, Leblon. Some of you had taken the tour with me in the region of Copacabana. So let's take a look at this map representing the Christ Redeemer. We've done tour there. Good morning from New Zealand. Ah, cool, Jaitel. Thanks for letting me know. Uh, here is the Samba Drum, where the carnival takes place. It's close to the central. Maracanã Stadium. Uh, here is the port area where I give the Little Africa tour. And here is where we are in Aterro do Flamengo. So Aterro do Flamengo will go all the way from here, okay, to here. It's a huge park in Botafogo. And then Copacabana is all the way up there in the south zone. And but the park of Aterro. So Aterro is all around this area and it's surrounded by this city center, the Guanabara Bay and these beautiful gardens there. On my right side is the city center where I live. Here, another view of the museum. Hi, Rick, thanks for joining. Surrounded by the trees already. And can you hear the birds? There is a bird singing. Which is a sabia. Sabia is the bird here that has one of the most beautiful singings in the region. And people are doing the maintenance of the park at this moment, cutting the grass, keeping it tidy. And uh, the park has been through a good phase now with its garden being taken care of. And I will share some of them. There are birds I can see here, the Benchy Vs which are here on the trees. 
I don't know if I will be able to spot them to show you, but they make a sound like I don't know if you can tell from the camera, but it's actually uh, here, somewhere here, the middle. I can see with my eyes, but with the camera, it's a little bit harder to... Ah, can you? Great! And thanks for joining. So the Banshee V is a bird that I also found a cousin, an American cousin when I lived in, in the US, but it sang in another language. Oh, great, great. I'm glad you can see. He's also looking at you. He's like looking down, just in his head and wondering, what the hell, why is she looking at me? They birds, they have very good eyes. And they are more aware of our uh, arrival than we are of them in the surroundings. Oh, great, thanks. And also here on the gra in the grass, uh, there is another bird which we call the ee, the many birds. Wow, they they're fighting. They are very uh, fighting for territory. You know, they must have their uh, their nest somewhere here because there are many nests in these trees of different species, and there will be the canaries, the Brazilian. Oh, yeah, there is a couple. Can you see the couple? There they are. It is better to see them. And they sing the... Now they know they've been observed. And they are quiet. But soon they will shout and cry. Also here we can find many species such as the canaries of Brazil. Canarinho da Terra and uh, the green birds, which are the parakeets, what we call him, the maritacas or the maracanã birds. There are those who build their houses out of clay, what we call the John of Clay, João de Barro, the architects of mud. And all, many of them, are, they fight for their territories as well. Now, the trees, they make place for ecosystems of all sorts. And they create a, a fine balance between animal life and other vegetations such as here the lichens that we can see which is a combination of fungi and moss and it creates uh, humidity it keeps humidity to the to the tree and helps on the temperature to keep the temperature of the tree besides also creating micro ecosystems for other plants to sprout and generate life for other species such as the epiphytas epiphytas are these plants that hang on the top of the trunk and they can be bromeliads cactuses Like I'm trying to spot the cactuses here. Can you see the cactus hanging there? Look, it's hanging there between the trunks. Those cactuses, they were able to be born there because there were the combinations of lichens creating humidity. Now I will move from here because they are cutting the grass. It makes a lot of noise and also dust. Well, hi, Noella, thanks for joining. I am Kelly Tavares from Rio Encounters Experiences. Uh, I'm back, I'll be doing tours as much as I can. Now the tourism is back in Rio, so I'm running tours every day. 
and I'm a certified tour guide here in Rio de Janeiro. So uh, a professional tour guide who actually uh, make a living out of running tours locally and when you support me virtually as well. Thank you so much. Look at this. Now from this part, which is the beginning of the Aterro do Flamengo public park in Rio de Janeiro, we have a beautiful view of the Guanabara Bay. Uh, that part there with rocks, that line, gray line, is a part where people like to go to walking, also during New Year's Eve to see the fireworks of Flamengo. Here on the left side is the Santa Luzia Club of also Vasco da Gama foot soccer club and the vicinities of the Santos Dumont Airport, which is the national local airport of Rio de Janeiro. Also, my tip for you, one of the great place, best place to arrive in the city because you actually have a beautiful view of everything that we are showing here, but from a bird's eye perspective and from the Sugarloaf Mountain. Look at the Sugarloaf Mountain here. It's the second top visited attraction in town. And there is a sailor sailing boat departing there and other boats coming in to hear what we see in the left. In our right side is Marina da Gloria. It's the yacht club where every day uh, people can rent yachts and rent a space to participate on tours or sailing tours around the bay, the Guanabara Bay, and see these beautiful landscapes from the seaside from, with another perspective. The Sugarloaf Mountain is the second most visited attraction in town and I can also run a tour there if you want. If you support me on, on every time I do tours then I get more uh, uh, motivated to plan to take the Uber there, to go get the tickets, get in and run the tour. Uh, it takes time. So sometimes you take a tour here that is 40 minutes, but actually it took me uh, five hours or three hours to prepare with times of between coming here, researching the details and so on. So this is actual work. Oh, gosh, Daniel arrived here. And scared me <laughs> getting my feet. <laughs> ah, look at that. Sorry. My friend Daniel, well, who, we Hello. run tours together. He knew I was going to run the tour Sorry. here. Sorry. And then he, he freaked me out here, no. like, doing that with my leg almost. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Daniel, how are you? Okay. Tá Feliz, animado. Yeah? Yeah. Ah, que bom. He was Sorry, here backing yeah. me up. Thank you, Mary Lou, for supporting and leaving a tip. Okay, Daniel, thanks for coming and joining. Uh, let me uh, come down yeah, and ask you a question. No worries, come here. Let me know. Oh. AB, thanks for joining. Mary Lou is, is greeting to you. <laughs> uh, Daniel, what were you doing now? I was doing... How do you call it? In uh, um, drive lessons. Le drive lessons. Ah, drive lessons. He was yeah. taking drive lessons. I thought I thought you were rowing. No. Rowing no. the boat. No, 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 no. It was yesterday. Yesterday. Yeah. So uh, Daniel. It was yes, here. Daniel. Oh, he he rows. Uh, he takes class on rowing here in the departing from here from Marina da Gloria. And do you like to do that, Daniel? Yes, it's incredible. But do you do uh, uh, do that do that as a hobby, right? Yes. Also a sport. Yes. Do you recommend for people who come if they can join a, a class? A lot. Yeah. It's what else do you do, Daniel? Besides helping me out with the virtual tours sometimes. Oh, uh, I like to do some photographies. And ah, video he's a video maker. Yes. That's why he also helps. I like helps. to ride bike. Oh yeah, he's yeah. also a biker. And he has beautiful photography of Rio de Janeiro landscapes. 
So in case you want to support Daniel's work, you uh, can purchase uh, some of his pictures of Rio de Janeiro, beautiful landscapes. And he has a website. Yes, he has a nice bike. Uh -huh. He's a biker. He's riding his bike everywhere he goes in the city. And, <laughs> yeah, where is that? He said he has a sticker of out Bolsonaro. So we are in the moment of elections. Ah, what's your Facebook? Uh, Facebook, I don't know, the website. The website of Daniel Falcão. Please, Daniel, share your website so the people website. can see your pictures. Daniel Falcão. Daniel Falcão. F-A-L-C-A-O. Photo. Photo with P-H with or F-O. With F. F-O-T-O. Dot net. Dot net. So Daniel Falcão. Dona Mitchell. Photo. Dot net. Sorry, website. Let's see. I can't send messages from here. I can try to. But you can follow me. Ah, is that it? Satan. Put it. Yeah. Yay, Satan. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. Tanya, thanks for joining. Yes, so if you want to know Daniel's work, please check on his website and purchase pictures. He can send you a way digital copy of his art and you can get some beautiful photos of the place that we show here in the tours. You can actually purchase directly with him in a very good quality. And that's going to be... Uh, ah, okay. And that's going to be uh, great for us to have like a good photographer supporting on the tours because he has these video makers eyes, camera moves and the compositions uh, skills. Yeah, Satan's so supportive. Now we are leaving away the site that takes to the airport and to the city center, which is there on the right side. Now we can see another group here of people. They're warming up under the imperial palm trees or palmeiras imperiais. And they are getting ready for another class here. That's very common in the grasses of Aterro do Flamengo to have people gathering for all sorts of social activities, incorporating the arts, dancing, and sports. Here they will get their wood, these wood legs and learn how to walk on them. And a beautiful view to the city center. All the buildings being left behind there because we will walk on the other direction to the sea, which is on my left side. And uh, yeah, Daniel likes that I was showing the birds. Thank you, Anne, so much for supporting. Uh, I, oh, actually, uh, there is one thing. I found a baby bird of an, uh, it's an European bird, what we call here the holinha. And actually I took, it's about 10 days. I'm, I was force feeding it. And then I bought these seeds for birds, uh, mixed food. Ah, não, porque aqui a gente mostra o jardim melhor. And then uh, I was feeding it with a syringe. Now it doesn't want to go away. It has, uh, it's a stay in my home. And it's there today, was jumping from one plant to another on the back patio. And then a friend lent me uh, one of those little gaiolas, which is uh, uh, like a, a jail for birds. I don't like that, but I had to put it back there because its wing is still not healed. 
and my cats can eat them, eat it. So to avoid that tragedy, I put the bird inside of that. But one day, I, maybe I will show you. I called it Ikaru, and I hope it gets well soon with its wing to fly away back to nature. Yeah, it's nice to see Daniel again, Mary Louise saying. <laughs> yeah, I also like when he comes and joins. Uh, Thank you. Like to see you again, too. <laughs> yes. He's also glad to be here together and seeing you here present with us. Ana, please, I hope you'll come back to Brazil and Rio de Janeiro to take a tour with me to see Daniel's work, maybe on an exhibition at an, a gallery. One thing that I will share with you is another modern uh, concrete uh, architecture which is a memorial to the soldiers and the military from the Navy and from the Air, Air Force who fought on the Second World War. So they built the park in the, fifth, in the 1965, but already in the end of the 50s, they set up this memorial here to the soldiers, the military who died from Brazil in the war. So inside of this memorial, there is a wall with the names of the soldiers, the people who fought and died. And there is also the statues representing the three uh, military forces from the Navy, the army and the air force you can see uh, the memorial from the other side of the avenue as well with the sea on the back and we are on the back part of it nice day today isn't it daniel it is blue sky we were having many cloudy days in rio actually Warm, but windy. it's windy today Ah, so Mary Lou said that when she comes, she wants to take a tour with me and wants you to join to say hello and we can have a beer together. There is a, a beautiful art also, the uh, modern uh, contemporary art. Look at the shape, reminding its shape, reminding also beautiful artwork piece but also could be attached to different uh, means of transportation the military force now here people rent their bikes on itaú and it's something that people really love to do in aterro do flamengo the project of aterro do flamengo it has many trees like these ones that goes well in the around the shore, which are the castanheiras. They are nut trees. Look at the fruits. It's not always that you see the the fruits of the castanheiras. Let me share. Ah, that's a beautiful composition for a a print, huh? Please take your snapshot. Five, four, three, two, one. There you go, Sugarloaf and Marina da Gloria. And on the top of my head, I want to share the Castanheira tree, which is very common here in Rio de Janeiro. Chelsea, thanks for joining. It has fruits now. Let's see if you can spot the fruits and see it. It's green. And the bats really love it. When they arrive, they will come and they will eat these fruits. And the, in the evening, the bats, they come, they live also on the trees and they will be uh, flying down, you know. You see all the bats flying, it's cool. So this project of the, the park, you see on the surroundings, it's all park. And we can walk, if I walk, just to give you an idea, on this pace that I am, 
until the end of the park in Botafogo, which is close to the Sugarloaf Mountain, Botafogo Beach, then I will take about two hours walking slowly like that. So just to give you an idea of the length of the park and the extension to the side from the shore to the city will vary. For example, here, the buildings are more there on the back and the city center is getting more further there. And here you can see already the transition to Gloria, which is being considered the south zone part of the city. Uh, well, is the fl name Flamengo football team. Actually, the name Flamengo is from the Flamengo people, the Dutch people who came to Rio de Janeiro, which also is connected to the name of the soccer team Flamengo. Which is the name of the neighborhood as well. No, we are transitioning to Gloria, but the Flamengo Park will uh, will also pass by the Flamengo neighborhood. It's city center, Gloria, Catechi, Flamengo, Botafogo Beach, and close to Botafogo at the end, we can go walking by here, from here or by bike. We have go to Urca neighborhood. Daniel and I have given a tour in Urca neighborhood uh, underneath those, uh, the mountain of Sugarloaf Mountain. It's a very neat place as well. And the Dutch, they were here involved with the slave trade. Anne, Am, are you uh, from the Netherlands? And so the Dutch, they were competing with the Portuguese on the slave trades, building up different alliances in Africa, and also had a huge influence in the northeast of Brazil. So they wanted to uh, take over more spaces, like the French did take over Rio de Janeiro uh, in 1555, by the time of the governor uh, of the emperor, of Francisco the first, Francis the the first of France. So they took over Rio de Janeiro for decades, and then the Portuguese uh, took uh, put their eyes back in Brazil. And so they decided to come and look to Brazil again because they were afraid of having the French taking over the territory and this being a French colony, becoming a French colony. Ah, okay, and Vitória Espírito Santo. I've lived in Vitória. I lived in Espírito Santo for, I think, eight years of my life. And I studied at the Federal University of Vitória in Espírito Santo. Uh, so you see from here, in the Sugarloaf Mountain, when the Portuguese decide that they need to m mark their presence in the colony of Rio de Janeiro, taking over the city back from the French, they come in, in a battle here, they defeat the, the French, building alliances with the indigenous people and tribes of the Teminimo on the other side of the bay in what today is Niterói city. And they promised uh, they took advantage of the rivalry, rivalry that had the tribes from the other side with this side, and they took over it here, yeah. defeating, exterminating the nations uh, that were present here, expelling many of the people to the mountains and hills in other parts of town. And when they did that, they did that close to the sugar loaf, and they put there in the middle of the Aterro do Flamengo Park, a landmark to remember what they call the foundation of the colonial city in 1565. The city that they thought when they first arrived, the Portuguese thought that Rio de Janeiro was an actual river. They arrived in Janeiro, January. So they call it the city of Rio de Janeiro and also the city of San Sebastian. Of São Sebastião.
from here, the hustle and bustle of the city on the avenues on the right side, they get, uh, the volume is lower. We don't see it, listen to it very loud. But for those of you who had taken the tour of Copacabana, ah, there is the airplane departing from Santos Dumont, SDU Airport. Where is this going to? Mm, it's from Goal. Must be going to Sao Paulo Guarulhos Air International Airport. But then here, uh, the idea in Copacabana, it had many houses, small houses or mansions from eclectic influence of the beginning of the 20th century. I mean, beginning of the 19th century, 1910, 1920 is the 20th century and the end of the 19th century. Sorry about that time time frame kind of confusion. But then many of the buildings, eclectic buildings, which were a big trend in fashion in the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century, they were started to be considered in the 20th century outdated and out of fashion. What was really <coughs> influences of a government that uh, was already thinking about a modern future and willing to gain space to the modern architecture in the gentrification era of the 20th century. So they thought that tearing down many of those buildings from Copacabana would be the best idea, but actually that was taking place and going on throughout the 40s and 50s when they were already with modern plans to build up higher buildings in the 50s and 60s to make real property exploitation. But in the 50s and the end of the 50s and middle of the 50s, a woman urban planner called Maria Lotta, she was really smart. She uh, talked with Lucio Costa, one of the uh, administrators uh, in Brazil in that time, that he would actually had his government more reminded throughout time, through time, if he built up something that was more public and democratic. So instead of having like Copacabana, Ipanema, many buildings right across uh, a few paths from the beach with all the cars passing by and big, high, tall buildings. Actually, if we, if we consider the idea of having this green space such as this, then this would be one of the masterpieces of his government. And actually, I'm, we are really glad that he heard the idea of this visionary woman because then we had the first project with of Maria Lota, with who was a partner of famous poet Elizabeth Bishop from the U.S. Does any of you have any of you heard of Elizabeth Bishop? She was a famous poet, and she was married with not officially married, but she was a partner of Maria Lota, who worked on the first design in plans for the urban plan and sketches of the park. Let's share a view of this urban setting in between the lush scenery of Atejo. So please research Elizabeth Bishop. And they had a beautiful house here in Alto da Boa Vista neighborhood where the Tijuca forest is. A modern house because they were connected with all the modern movements of Brazil artists, architects, engineers, and inside of this project joined Alfonso Eduardo Haidi had already uh, the plan to build and started building the Museum of Modern Art that you saw, the memorial for the war, everything has this aesthetics that will dialogue with each other. And the, the park, a lot of the areas of the park were actually water, were beaches. 
Yes, I love this park. It's my favorite anywhere. And look how how it would be without the park. Just a busy, busy express line of cars, but now being surrounded by it, even the sound of the city is a little bit, I don't know how to call it, muffed. And you can, it, during COVID time, it was a place where people would come to and have like a place to escape from the fear of being in lockdown. People were here setting up their surrounds around and, and either alone or just with their families having some space, but it's still enjoying nature. And we are grateful for Roberto Burle Marx for building the plan here because it's really gorgeous. And it's still there are more sets on another bridge there. We can go to that bridge and then come back. What do you think, Daniel? Good, right? The Botanical Gardens close is in the Botanical Garden neighborhood. Uh, it's in the Jardim Botanico neighborhood. And it's just 15 minutes from here. Uh, it's really close to here. A close uh, a sneer. And it works mostly days of the week. It's definitely an amazing place to go. We talked about the Botanical Garden when we did the tour of the Lagoon Sacopenapan or Rodrigo de Freitas, as mostly people know. And I can actually run a tour in the Botanical Garden. But like I said, uh, I'm a, a professional tour guide and I need to go give priority to the work and do the works that are like prepaid tours or if you support me, it's very appreciated because then that encouraged me to research more and to uh, reserve more time, uh, more time slots to run the virtual tours as well. Hi, Judith. Thank you. I actually, I was, when I started, before being a certified tour guide, my first tours that I ran were at the National Museum and in the Botanical Garden when I was an intern. And I had no idea that I would become a tour guide. Thank you so much. So there on the top of that mountain is the church, which was the, the favorite church of the royal family here in Brazil. With Don João VI, Dona Maria I, they, uh, they would go, they would like to go to the mass in that church, which is a colonial church from the 1700s with its unique architecture in a time. And the water, yes, good point. Then, Daniel, please practice your English. Yeah. The water used to go to the bottom of the hill. All the way to those oh, walls there. Yeah, so that's yeah. why they have high walls, because the water would go there. But where did they take all these? How did they do all these fillings? With mountains. <laughs> With mountains. <laughs> the rock. Uh, that's the Church of Gloria, Our Lady of Gloria, Nossa Senhora da Gloria. The rocks that they took from the mountains. From there, from the city center. Yes. And yeah, mostly there. Amazing. Oh, Daniel also did his homework, doing yeah. some research. You see a beautiful view of the city from here, the city center where I live and love, uh, and where in many hotels in Copacabana they say they tell people not to go because it's very dangerous. But actually, nothing ever happened to me there. I love the city center. It's very uh, artistic, cultural, historic, and there were many hills around here. And because there were many hills and the city was uh, throughout the 500 centuries of colonization modernizing, it, the, the solutions they were finding was to tear down the hills and with different technology throughout time and workers 
doing the work of breaking hills to remove the the rocks to build up houses and also with a strong water a strong hose and water force they tear down mountains like Morro do Castelo the Castelo mountain or the castle mountain and from there they removed a lot of debris I don't know how to say that in English but a lot of entulhos uh, rocks and big blocks of rocks to do the fillings and more in rocks. and more rocks <laughs> and rocks and rocks and rock rolling uh, to build up the fillings of Aterro do Flamengo Aterro do Flamengo and actual the Red Beach where we ran tour Nossa Senhora da Glória very good thanks say tune for your contribution Joe, thanks for joining, and Janice too. We are actually finishing our tour. Yes, when I went, my extended family said the same that is dangerous, but we went anyway, and we went to Rocinha. Ah, okay. I'm glad you did, Annie. And one thing about Christine, Sarah, hey Joe, hi. So, one thing that actually is important to say is that many people say, ah, oh, this is dangerous. There are dangerous areas in the city. Yes, there are. You need to know how to navigate. And when you don't know, ask me, ask us during the tours. We'll give you tips in the different places on how to navigate and take the most out of your experiences in Brazil and in Rio de Janeiro. Uh, stick with the crowds, walk, walk main streets, and that's a very good way to, to go and keep yourself safe. If you go to a favela, it's better to go to a resident guide because it's safer. Now look at these beautiful flowers. Let's finish the tour with a view to the, the beautiful flowers of the Ipe tree. It's a native Brazilian tree. And it's blossoming right now. No worries, Sarah. Please subscribe and join us on the next tour. Uh, I love gardens uh, and landscapes. I research also that. And uh, I hope you appreciated. You had a good time. And I hope you can contribute with your, our work and your ways possible and also with money because that helps us to pay the bills. Thank you so much. And more advice is to come. Just keep posting, ask your questions, participate, subscribe. Let's go. Finish. Oh, look, that's a beautiful view also of the, the Yacht Marina Club of da Marina da Gloria. <laughs> Your canoe is there, Daniel. Not Can you see? Ah. <laughs> and we are. Your club My canoe. Club's canoe. Your canoe club. Canoeing club. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah, Marina de Gloria is cool. They have a performance hall, a real art show. They already had this year, and many other events. Fancy. Uh, big events that takes place there, but usually I don't have money to buy the tickets, so I don't go. It's having the Oktoberfest. Yeah. Ah, they will, ah, they no, have the Oktoberfest now. The, okay, yeah. cool. Bye-bye, Carol. Bye, Abdu. Please keep posted, follow us at Rio Encantos for the next tours. I will be running my tours. Uh, as I have more free time, for now I've been running my work on the tours on street. So follow Rio Encantos, R-I-O-E-N-C-A-N-T-O-O-S on Instagram and follow me on Heiko. Bye bye. Thank you so much. See you on the next.
gente fala bye bye, não? Bye bye. <risos> bye bye. See you the next time. Yes.